Is that good? So today I'm going to be doing a bunch of work on the Fox. Uh, we're going to be fixing the map sensor issue. I have a one bar map in it. I'm going to switch it out with a three bar GM map. Uh, it's in like the 09 and up Cadillac supercharged. It's a pretty neat little conversion you can do. Minor modifications. I'm also going to log into HP tuners. I found linear and offset settings for this sensor. So I'm going to put those in HP tuners and hopefully we can get this thing fired up today if I get it fired up uh, I will check the two-step out on it because I've been dying to try this out and see what it's like uh, I'm like a little, little kid in a candy store guys you know so I just want to see what this thing does I won't sit there and hold it for a long period of time or anything because that's not good for the engine but I will check it out I will test it that way I can give some feedback on it for people who are going to do future purchases and whatnot I also have some other things to do We'll take a walk over here to the board. We'll take a look at the list of the rest of the things we have to do to get this ready for this Saturday. Okay, so as you can see here, today I'm going to be, even though I have this crossed off, we're going to be working on this today. Uh, I'd like to get the wideband connected. What I have right now is an autometer ultralight 2 gauge that I'd like to show how to connect that into your HP Tuners Pro. I wound up not needing the injector flow data. I have two gauges I want to look at fixing. I have three vacuum lines left to fix. Everything else is done. Map sensor, we're putting that in today so I can keep that crossed off the list. Two-step controller we did yesterday. I have the video up for that already. I have to hook my fans up. Right now I have those to a toggle switch. So I'm gonna hook those up to the actual ECU. That way they can be controlled in HP tuners for what temp they turn on. We're gonna go over the fluids, check the oil, the coolant, etc. And then these last few things we're not gonna really worry about until after we're done dynoing it. So I can just erase those off for now. Okay guys, one other thing I did wanna mention is that to swap to this GM map sensor, you're also going to need a conversion plug, which I'll show pictures of that as well. And because the third gen map sensors are a little different, there is one wire that actually swaps back from one to the other. So you will have to keep an eye out on that if you're gonna swap this sensor. Uh, I did get it running pretty decent. I am gonna just finish up a few butchered up vacuum lines up here for the fuel pressure regulator and remove this old MSD map sensor that I was using for the MSD Atomic. So I'm gonna get that stuff off of here, get this finished up, and then uh, we'll start working on the wideband and I'll show in depth how to hook up the wideband input signal and change all that stuff too, so. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to go on HP Tuners and I'm going to find where the map sensor adjustments are so I can set my scaling. If you click on the engine tab and then you go to airflow, you'll see there is map sensor linear and map sensor offset. So I actually have adjustments written down for this. I actually went on a few different websites. I even went on Sloppy Mechanics Wiki, which is where I get a lot of my information from. And honestly, the settings that were on there were different from the website I got it off of. I'll post the website link in the description, but 
on Sloppy Mechanics Wiki, I think the linear and offset for a three bar GM map is not for this map. I believe it's for the earlier generation maps, but we're gonna see here because I'm gonna set the first settings that I got first and we'll see if that lets the car start up. Okay, let's try it again. She idled on her own on the first try. Okay, so this is my auto meter gauge instructions that came with my wideband gauge. Um, it shows that I have two wires coming off of the wideband. I have a blue wire, which is my data logger signal output, which that is the positive signal we will be using to hook into the HP tuners. And then I also have the black wire, which is the data logger signal ground. Um, I went ahead and looked up on uh, HP Tuner's website because I lost my instructions how to hook this in. I actually took a picture of the HP Tuner's website uh, diagram. It shows inputs one through four are extra inputs, which is where we will be putting in our data logger signal in the first auxiliary input. Then you have five and six are ground and seven and eight are device out one and two. So they're actually outputs you can control. Uh, so I'll use the five for my ground from the wideband and then I'll use my number one for the wideband signal and the signal that comes from the autometer gauge is actually a zero to five volt output actually it's zero to four and that's extremely important when you're doing the calculation for the wideband setup in HP tuners and I'll go over that in a second once I get it wired up So I'm gonna go ahead and get that wired up real quick into the side of my HP tuners unit and uh, then we'll take a look at the values in that on the HP tuners itself. Okay guys, as you can see here, the blue wire goes in the top port for my autometer ultralight gauge. That is my positive input, output from the gauge, input to the HP Pro uh, tuning module, which I'll show in a second. And then you have the negative, which goes in the fifth port down, fifth or sixth, which is your signal ground from the gauge. Okay, I'm going to plug this in to my handheld MPVI Pro and that should provide the 0 to 4 volt that the wideband can uh, supply. Now I'll show how to do the range equation in a second, but if you look at the gauge there, you'll see that it is a 8 to 18 range. So that's very important to know that for the um, calculation. So I'm going to plug this in quick. And then we're going to go ahead and do the calculation and show you how to put it on the HP tuners. Okay, guys. So, on the enhanced I.O. configuration directly off of HP tuners website, it does tell you here how you can list it manually or you can list the linear formula, which that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to list the linear formula. Um, it tells you if you use a 0 to 5 output from your gauge, your output voltage range is 5. It tells you if your wideband controller's output is between 10 and 18 air fuel ratio, your AFR range is 8. For us, it's 10 because, now remember, because it's an 8 to 18, so that's 10. Our, our range will be 10 for the gauge. And our voltage range will only be 4 because it's 0 to 4 volts. And that's what the uh, autometer page says as well, 0 to 4 volts. So it tells you here, take your total output voltage range divided by the air fuel ratio range and that'll give you 508 that's for their example ours would be 4 over 10 so we'll take our 4 divided by 10 that will give us 0 0.400 and then that will be what we list for the linear formula now taking those values into the HP tuners you'll go in here right click hit add channel um, it's gonna want to know what channel to add you go to MPVI Pro I added the first input because that's the one that I hooked my input signal into on the HP tuner so I click that it adds it for me as you can see here I have the MPVI.1 AM 4110 so you right click transform open that up go to oxygen sensors air fuel ratio now I clicked on the first one AM 4110 and it shows down here 
that is exactly what it said on the ultralight instructions. So I click that, you hit the FX button. Then you pop up with this screen. I changed my description to auto meter ultralight. My function is now gonna be changed. I'm gonna put 0 0.400 because that's the range that our calculation came up with. And we leave the 10 alone because that is our AFR range. And you click OK. Once you do that, it sets everything up for you so that this value here is what you would be data logging and that will be your air fuel ratio. And that's how you set that up. Okay guys, so I think that's enough for today. Um, I got the vacuum lines all situated. I checked the fluids, oil's good, coolant's good. Uh, we went over how to hook up the sensor and we got the car running pretty decent. Got the map values all set up, got the three bar map in. I think we're just about ready to get it tuned. I'm gonna cross a few things off the list here and then uh, we'll go over it again before Saturday, but I think she's just about ready to get tuned. Okay guys, day two. Today I'm gonna be working on the tune a little bit. What I'd like to do is go over a couple things. I just got done hooking my fans up. They come on when the car is up to temp. So I just like to do a few things on the tune. I got all my vacuum lines sorted out. You can see there, uh, this is the only fitting they had at the Napa. So I put that on. I got my base fuel pressure set to 58 with my boost reference fuel pressure regulator. Um, boost controllers hooked up as you can see there at the top of the manifold. Here I have my fans hooked up. And uh, they go on. Uh, I have them set 170 for the first two fans which would be the trans cooler fan and this fan here. And then the second fan comes on at about 180 and that way it stays the temp really, really good. I think it'll be really good in the summer. So I'll do a quick startup. We'll check everything out and then we'll see where we're at. Not bad, not bad. Fuel trims are close. What? Yeah, yeah what? Are you? Yeah. What's so funny? Last but not least, Got my pops over here laughing at me because he don't like stickers on all his stuff. Right, Dad? No sponsors on my car. I thought you said you were going to let me put one on. Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. Now I don't get to put one on. Nope. How about I make you a deal? If I beat you, I get to put one on your car. Why not? You scared? You got a better chance of me running down the quarter mile naked than putting a sticker on my car if you beat me. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to see you naked though. Exactly. So this will be the last video I post before I get the car dyno tuned. We got pretty much everything figured out on it so far. So then sat, we're gonna load it up Friday and then take it to Jensen's on Saturday. So stay tuned for the dino video.